Good morning, everyone. As I have said before, we have the tools to beat COVID, COVID-19, if we come together as a country and use the tools we have. Early this month, I laid out a six-part plan for the fall that does just that. One, vaccinate the unvaccinated, including with new requirements. Two, keep vaccinated, keep the vaccinated protected. Three, keep children safe and schools open. Four, increase testing and masking. Five, protect the economic, our economic recovery. And six, improve the care for people with COVID-19. Now, we've made important progress uh, on each front. And this week, as planned, we took a key step in protecting the vaccinated with booster shots, which our top government doctors believe provides the highest level of protection available to date. The Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, they've completed their independent scientific review. And based on that review, the majority of Americans who were fully vaccinated with the Pfizer vaccine are now able to receive the booster shot six months after they've received their second shot. Six months after you received the second shot, you're eligible. Those eligible include, in addition to meeting the requirement of six months after the second shot, those people that are 65 years or older, adults 18 and over with certain underlying health conditions like diabetes and obesity, and those who are at increased risk of COVID-19 because of where they work or where they live, like healthcare workers, teachers, grocery store workers. That's over, that, that group makes up 60 million Americans who are now eligible for a booster with <clears throat> six months after their second shot. And up to 20 million who will receive their, uh, re receive their earlier Pfizer shot at least six months ago are eligible today. So those January, February, those folks are eligible now, now. And I've made clear all along, the decision of which booster shot to give when to start the shot and who will get them is left to the scientists and the doctors. That's what happened here. And while we waited and prepared, we brought enough, we bought enough booster shots and states and pharmacies, doctors, offices, and community health centers have been preparing to get shots in arms, booster shots in arms for a while. And like your first and second shot, the booster shot is free and easily accessible. Booster shots will be available in 80,000 locations, including over 40,000 pharmacies nationwide. So, my message today is this. If you've got the Pfizer vaccine, if you got the, the Pfizer vaccine in January, February, or March of this year, and you're over 65 years of age, go get the booster. Or if you have a medical condition like diabetes, or you're a frontline worker, like a healthcare worker or a teacher, you can get a free booster now. I'll be getting my booster shot. Uh, I, 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 it's hard to acknowledge I'm over 65, but I'll be getting my booster shot. <laughs> it's a bear, isn't it? I tell you, acknowledge anyway. But all kidding aside, I'll be getting my booster shot. I'm not sure exactly when I'm going to do it, but as soon as I can get it done. Of course, millions of Americans got the Moderna and Johnson and Johnson vaccines. My message for you is this. You still have a high degree of protection. Our doctors and scientists are working day and night to analyze the data from those two organizations on whether and when you need a booster shot. And we'll provide updates for you as the process moves ahead. <clears throat> Again, the bottom line is, if you're fully vaccinated, you're highly protected from severe illness, even if you get COVID-19. In fact, Recent data indicates there's only one confirmed positive case per 5,000 fully vaccinated Americans per day. You're as safe as possible. You're in good shape. And we're doing everything we can to keep it that way, which is where the booster comes in. So let me be clear. Yes, we've made incredible progress in vaccinating Americans with over 182 million people being fully vaccinated as of today. But this is a pandemic of the unvaccinated. 
And it's caused by the fact that despite Americans having an unprecedented and successful vaccination program, despite the fact that for almost five months, free vaccines have been available in 80,000 locations, we still have, we still have over 70 million Americans who have failed to get a single shot. And to make matters worse, there are elected officials actively working to undermine with false information the fight against COVID-19. This is totally unacceptable. The vast majority of Americans are doing the right thing. Three quarters of the eligible have gotten at least one shot, but one quarter has not gotten any. And in a country as large as ours, that's 25% minority can cause an awful lot of damage. And they are causing a lot of damage. The unvaccinated overcrowd our hospitals, overrunning emergency rooms and intensive care units, leaving no room for someone with a heart attack or a cancer operation needed to get the life-saving care because the places where they would get that care are crowded. They are not available. The unvaccinated also put our economy at risk, recovery at risk, causing unease in the economy around the, and uh, causing unease around the kitchen table. I can imagine what's going on in the conversations this morning, a lot of parents wondering what's going to happen. What's going to happen? Those who have been vaccinated, what's going to happen? Potentially slowing economic growth, costing jobs. The refusal has cost all of us. The refusal to get vaccinated has cost all of us. And I'm moving forward to vaccination requirements wherever I can. These requirements will cover two-thirds of all workers in America. And I'm pleased to see more businesses and organizations instituting their own vaccination requirements. I've had business leaders call me and thank me for setting the policy to allow them to do the same thing. They are able to do it anyway, but it gives them the ability to move forward. We're making progress. For example, United Airlines, which required vaccines about seven weeks ago, now has 97% of their employees vaccinated. Just four weeks ago, the Department of Defense required vaccinations for the military. And already 92%, 92% of active duty service members are vaccinated. And we're on track to administer 24 million shots in arms in September. So please, do the right thing. Do the right thing. And I understand there's a lot of misinformation you've been fed out there. But try to look through, get, get to people you trust, the people who've been vaccinated. Ask them. Ask them. So get vaccinated. But don't just take it from me. Listen to the voices of the unvaccinated Americans who are lying in hospital beds, taking their final breath, saying, and literally we've seen this on television, if only I'd gotten vaccinated. If only. If only. They're leaving behind husbands and wives, small children, people who adore them. People are dying and will die who don't have to die. It is not hyperbole suggests it's literally a tragedy. Please don't let this become your tragedy. Get vaccinated. It can save you life, your life. It can save the lives of those around you. You know, text your zip code to 438829. 438829, or visit vaccines.gov to find a vaccination location near you now. Let me close with this. We also made so much progress during the past eight months in this pandemic, and now we face a critical moment. We have the tools. We have the plan. We just have to finish the job together as one nation. And I know we can. I know we can. God bless you all, and please look out for your own self-interest and health here. Get vaccinated. May God protect our troops. Thank you.